Hello and welcome to Ivory Blush Roses and Vlogmas video number 9. I'm having fun sharing bits of my Christmas season with you through these videos. Last year I shared the making of the last stocking, but I hadn't shared my own crazy quilted stocking. I filmed the making of it a couple of years ago, but never shared it with you. So today is the day. I've made stockings for each member of the family through the years, but I only had a plain one. It was time to make one for me. And what better way to do it than to create a crazy quilted one? All the other stockings are made of cotton twill with an ironed crayon drawing. I drew my mouse when I made my granddaughter's stockings, but I never finished it. This little mouse is from the Beatrix Potter book, The Tailor of Gloucester, which is my favorite of her books. To make my stocking blend with all the others, the crazy quilting and embroidery is going to be off-white. I've accumulated quite a bit of off-white silk and brocade that I'm going to piece the stocking with. First, I got a piece of unbleached muslin and traced my pattern onto it using a fine Sharpie marker. I didn't cut it out as I want the leeway that the extra fabric provides when stitching. I got the sewing machine out, but before I started piecing the front, I wanted to think about the placement of the mouse. This piece of silk is big enough to frame the mouse. I pinned it in place where I wanted it and then gave it a light pressing. I pieced the front in a freeform manner, picking fabrics, trimming the pieces, and pressing the seams as I went until it was complete. I trimmed out the mouse using a quarter inch seam allowance all around. I love the way the mouse looks on the stocking. I decided to stitch all the seams before appliqueing the mouse down. After looking at the illustration of the mouse in the book, I decided to use a seam treatment with a similar feel. I stitched up several samples of stitches to see which one I liked best. The second one is a feathered up and down buttonhole stitch, and it's the one I decided to use on my stocking. You can find instructions for this stitch on Sharon B's Pintangle. I'll put a link in the description box below. I used an ivory silk buttonhole thread to do the embroidery. Since all the seams were the same, the stitching went very quickly. With the embroidery done, I took another look at the mouse on the stocking. I love the way it's looking. The embroidery accentuates the seams, yet doesn't detract focus from the mouse. After realizing that a quarter inch seam allowance was too large, I trimmed the mouse edges down to one eighth of an inch and clipped all the curves about an eighth of an inch apart to facilitate turning the edges under. I used a bone folder to press the edges. It is much easier than an iron on a piece like this, and I was able to get a nice firm edge all the way around. I took care to keep that black line on the outside as it helps to hide the applique stitches. Using tiny brass applique pins, I pinned the mouse in place. I used black thread and a fine needle to applique the mouse down. The black thread hides in that black line, and even if it shows, it looks like part of the design. I used teeny tiny stitches all the way around. Here is the applique stocking. Now it's time to add the cherry colored twist that the mouse is threading the needle with. Using a light pencil line, I drew the thread onto the stocking. Then using cherry colored silk twist, I embroidered the thread with an outline stitch. Now the front of the stocking is finished. When I turned it over, I realized that a stocking which is going to have things put into and pulled out of every year. All those embroidery threads on the back were going to catch. It needed a lining, so I cut another stocking piece from muslin which I pinned onto the back and then basted with the sewing machine around the outside edge and trimmed the edges neatly. I cut the back of the stocking out of the same twill that I used on all the other stockings. I pinned on my fabric pattern piece and cut around it. To assemble the stocking, I placed the right side of the twill towards the crazy quilted front of the stocking. I pinned it all around 
then stitched it, leaving the top open. The curves were clipped, and though not shown here, I did a second row of stitching 1 8 of an inch away from the edge for security. The other stockings are finished with a brocade cuff, but I wanted to use some vintage lace for mine. After going through my boxes of lace, I settled on this one. I love this piece of antique lace, and it was exactly the right length, with no waste. I ran a gathering thread through the top to add a tiny bit of fullness. Then I pressed the ends over a quarter of an inch and hand stitched the seam. I pinned the lace to the top of the stocking using lots of pins so it wouldn't move, and then I stitched it with the machine. Using the same brocade as the other stockings, I cut a 2 inch wide piece to create a self binding for the top. I pinned this on top of the lace and stitched a 1 quarter inch seam around the top, joining the ends at the back of the stocking. I stitched in a hanging loop created from a piece of rayon upholstery cording. I sealed the ends with fray check. Then I pressed the brocade up and folded it over to create a self binding about 3 8 of an inch wide on the front and about a half an inch wide on the inside. To make it easier to work, I turned the stocking inside out and pulled the lace out to prevent accidentally stitching through it. Then I pinned the binding down and whip stitched it into place. The last step was to pull up the hanging loop and stitch it to the stocking at the top and bottom edge of the binding to make it good and strong. And there it is! I'm so pleased with my finished stocking. I suppose I should probably embroider my name on it like all the others, but everyone knows who this one belongs to. I thought I was done making stockings last year, but this past month my fourth grandson was born, so next year I get to make another one. The stockings have become a beloved tradition in our family through the years. We no longer exchange adult gifts, but we do get stocking stuffers for everyone. I'm so grateful that you're spending time with me today. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video.